Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. We're getting started here with the watch kit. This is a short tutorial series that I've created that I'm posting on YouTube in 4K resolution so that you can see all of the, the great pixel goodness. Now, if you like that, click the like button. And if you wanna learn more, subscribe to the channel so that you can get the updates when we post more tutorials on watch kit. Also note that I'm doing a watch kit course sometime next year when the Apple Watch comes out along with the, the actual published version of WatchKit, which should be less buggy and a lot easier to work with than what we have now. And that should include native app support, which we don't have right now. So you're gonna have to use the, the current interface, which is a little bit interesting. The code is running in an extension on your iPhone and it's sending over the user interface information. The user interface and images are gonna store on the actual watch itself and messages are gonna pass over a network connection through Bluetooth or a peer-to-peer -peer connective technique. So when your app and your, sorry, when your watch and your iPhone separate for too far, your app's gonna stop working and it's gonna disengage and it won't work. So that's one of the limitations right now with this type of app that is available with the current version of WatchKit this should change once we have native app support. And so that's going to be sometime next year. We really don't know a timeline for that. All right. What we're going to do in here is create a timer. The timer is going to allow us to control what you see on the left there. Right now it's just counting up and it's going to keep counting up because we set the initial time to zero in the interface or, or something like that. Uh, it's The behavior is a little bit weird. They say that the preview sex matches the, the set date. I don't think they necessarily work together. I think the default state of this watch kit timer, the WK interface timer, is going to be zero, so it's going to count up. And there is a bug with the time format where the positional time does not work for small values. I have noticed that it does work appropriately once you pass the one-minute mark. So that's one thing to keep in mind right now. It's a little bit glitchy. All right, we're jumping in here, we're creating a new variable. So we're gonna start with a var, and I'm in the interface controller.swift file. So you'll find that right here. Just click on it in your project, and now I don't see anything. Let's switch back to the single view right here so we can just focus on the code. Now in here, we're gonna create a timer. I'm gonna call this something like my timer to distinguish it, or I could call it the done timer, or something like that, so I know that this is different from the watch timer, which is the user interface and probably a better name for the watch timer would have been appropriate, something like the interface timer or something like that that's that's just more appropriate. Now, we're gonna kind of create an NS timer here, and the timer's not always gonna be set, so because of that, we're gonna make it an optional value, so you're gonna put a question mark on the end and just make sure that you type it correctly, so you should see it right here, capital N, capital S, capital T, and then lowercase for everything else. With that, we are going to create this timer somewhere in our code, and we're gonna create it when we do the start button press. But we're gonna need one other piece of information before we can do that, is we need, a, we need to know how long this is gonna go, and so we need a duration attribute. So I'm gonna create a, a variable called duration, and this is gonna be of type NS time interval, or you could do double. Both are gonna be the same thing. NS time interval is used with NS timer, so it makes sense to sort of stay within that thing, and we can set this to an initial value. Now, I really want this timer to be 60, I want it to be three minutes. So I'm gonna take 60 seconds and multiply that by three, and that should give us a value. Note that if you don't put the type here and you just do 60 times three, you're gonna have an int, and that's gonna be an assumed type. So to make it so that it's a double, you need to make sure that you put the, the dot zero, otherwise you're gonna have a compilation error or a swift compiler error and it's not gonna work. So this is gonna be a number of seconds, which is gonna be three minutes for this code that you see right here. So now that we have that, the whole reason we're doing this is we need to know what the watch timer is gonna count down from, and we also need to be able to fire a timer when it's finished because there's no callback. The, the timer that runs on the Apple, Apple Watch is not gonna give us any messages back. So we have this limitation where we have to do a lot of processing on the iPhone side of things to keep track of things. All right, so the way we create a timer, we're gonna create done timer down here, 
and we're going to say done timer is equal to ns timer dot and you might say something like oh, i forget the other one the one you do want is the scheduled timer otherwise it never fires so just do scheduled timer this is the one that you want to do i've mistakenly done the other one and then nothing happens and then you sit there forever and nothing happens until you actually tell it to fire and that's a little bit more confusing. So, so the scheduled timer is going to make it so that it starts right at this line of code, which is what we want. And the time interval is going to be how, how long that it should, or so how many times it should fire. And what we want is to, to set this up so that it's not going to fire until our, our duration happens. So we're going to put duration here, and then the target is going to be self which is gonna be this code file. That's what this means. Self means this code file is gonna to respond to it. And then a selector is gonna be a method name that's going to be called. So we're gonna to have to add a method to make this work. Otherwise, in three minutes, your app is gonna crash and you'll be like, oh. So we don't want that to happen. So let's create a selector here. Now the syntax for this is selector with a capital S parentheses. It's kind of a function call, I guess. And then you pass in a string in quotation marks. So here we're gonna use the format uh, done, let's go timer done. And then a colon here, because there's gonna be a parameter which is gonna be the timer itself. That's just sort of standard. And then we'll hit tab to go to any object. User info, I'm just gonna set this to nil. We don't need anything here. Repeats is gonna be false. So this is very familiar if you've done any work with timers before in Objective-C. Otherwise, it's a little bit different in how we set them up. So this is gonna create a timer. But as you know, in three seconds, it's gonna crash. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I wanna do a, a three second duration here. When we press that start button, we're gonna have three seconds and the app is gonna crash in three seconds. So let's try that out over here. And I didn't actually press the button. Now it started the button. We count down three seconds and it should crash now. All right, so it's crashing because we haven't implemented the method and this is an important thing that you need to be aware of when this type of, of crash happens you need to be able to ha solve it and the way you can do that is look at the very first error message that you get that's printed to your console the console is going to be in this little bottom area that we see right here and it's going to tell you unrecognized selector was sent this is going to give you a clue as to which one it is so timer done we don't have a, a version of that and we're going to do that in a second and if you google unrecognized selector sent to instance, that's gonna give you insight on where to look as, as well as this right here. That is the key to solving this problem. So now you know how to solve that, you won't run into this issue, and if you do run into it, you can fix it. All right, so we're gonna go back to our project navigator by clicking on this little tab here, pull up the interface controller, and now we have to add a new function or a new method. So we're gonna add that down at the bottom here. That's gonna be func, and then it has to match the same signature. So timer done. If you're coming from Objective-C, you'd write it like this. Since we're in Swift, this means that we have a parameter here. And the parameter we have to pass in here is a timer object. And that's going to be NS timer. So that's going to be the signature of the function. With that, we can go ahead and print a message just to make sure that this is working. And I'll go ahead and run this. And I think we have to stop it. it. It didn't stop all the way. So I'll stop everything. I'll rerun and see what happens. So after three seconds, instead of crashing, we should see done print out when we start the Apple Watch. Just make sure that you select the window over here to get this started. And sometimes Xcode and the Apple Watch don't work. And if that happens, we might have to quit Xcode or quit the simulator to get it to work because it's not looking like it's working right now. All right, so if any of this is helpful, just click on like the video. Let's quit the simulator. Let's start it up again, see if that works. And we got the spinning wheel of death that went away. So now we have this window active. I can hit the start button, starts the timer three seconds later, it should say done. And it doesn't because we did something wrong. All right, so let's jump back to the code.
And do you spot the mistake? Pause the video if you don't, and I'll tell you what it is. I have time done instead of timer done. So a small typo like that is going to cause your app to crash. This is very specific. This needs to match this. Your best approach here is to do a copy and a paste, and that will solve most of your issues. And then make sure, because you have this right here, that means there needs to be a parameter right here. So this is a parameter. The timer is a parameter. And if we stop and run, let's try this one more time. And we should see, and it's still, it's still crashed, so we have to stop the extension or something. It's weird. Just hit stop a bunch of times until that goes away. And I might have broken it again. I think I did. It didn't like that. So let's quit the simulator. Go to iOS simulator, quit the simulator. Run this again. That should work. Cross our fingers. We see it. I'll click on the interface here. We'll hit the start button, start the timer, and done. All right, so that is how to work the NS timer. We now have the timer telling us when the event should be done. Now we have to make it so that the the user interface that we see here and the timer that we have running on the iPhone app are going to synchronize and actually work together so that we have a, a good experience. Because right now it's just counting up, the other one's counting down. They're totally not in sync. And so in the next video, we'll do that. If you like this video and you're interested in learning more about Swift or the Apple Watch, Click the like button and then subscribe on YouTube and you can keep watching these tutorials in 4K resolution, which is going to look super sharp if you have a large cinema display or a Thunderbolt display or even a 4K monitor or the new iMac 5K. All of them is going to look great so that you can learn how to make iPhone apps. All right, so let's see you in the next video.